Hello, everybody. Welcome to Always on Bible with Glenda Johns. Before we get started, I need you to click the subscribe button and the like button. You won't be charged a thing. And if you like what you have heard here, be thinking of friends and relatives with whom you can share the news of this podcast. I am Glenda Johns, and I will be hosting this series, A Fresh Look at Revelation, that I hope will literally change your life. I'm excited that you have chosen to learn about and at last really understand the book of Revelation. These podcasts are putting the events in Revelation in chronological order, which will help you to correctly interpret and follow the story that the book of Revelation is telling us. Now, welcome to this first episode before opening the book. Here, I will be giving you some pointers that you will need to know and keep in mind as you progress through this study. During this series, I will be arranging everything in the book of Revelation in the order in which it will happen, forsaking only the order of the scripture but not omitting anything of importance. This method of telling the story will enable you to more easily understand Revelation. Here I will be using facts of interpretation that are proven in my first book, Revelation Interpreted Accurately, Literally, Logically. This book listed every verse in Revelation in the exact order in which it appears in your Bible. However, this podcast is based on my second book, Revelation Chronologically. That book lists every verse of Revelation in the King King James Version, but put into chronological order so as to reveal when it will be fulfilled. As a personal matter of introduction, I am a member of Second Baptist Church, Cypress Campus, Houston, Texas. But before we get started, there are some basic things I need to assure you of. I will be using the futurist view of interpretation as my basis. That would include a pre-tribulation rapture of the church, a very literal interpretation of the scripture, and the fact that everything in the book of Revelation after chapter 4 remains to occur in the future and is not yet fulfilled. Number two, All quoted scripture references are from the King James Version of the Bible. I will not be repeating other published ideas of how these events might be fulfilled in real life in the future, but I will set forth here what has been revealed to me based on the technology we have today. Number three, I will be teaching you what I receive from God. These are not my own ideas. When the Holy Spirit showed me something, I would test it against other scriptures and common sense reasoning before deducting it to be true and accurate. When I started out writing my Bible study on Revelation, I intended not to contradict or disagree with anything that was generally accepted today as, quote, correct interpretation. However, very soon into my study, I was forced to lay my own opinions aside when I found that there was scripture that disagreed with what I had always believed to be true about Revelation. It was at that point in my study that God began to speak to my spirit on a daily basis, revealing new truths to me. I began writing my first copyrighted book about three to four years ago. Now that you have an inkling as to where I come from, I want to share with you in these meetings how the events of Revelation will be played 
out are fulfilled, which will help you to finally actually understand the book. I only ask that you listen carefully, lay aside, if only temporarily, your former beliefs, keep your Bible handy, and put your logical thinking cap on. I held myself to the following test before adopting any new idea as truth, and you should also follow these guidelines. Any interpretation of the Bible can be deemed to be correct or possible only if the following three questions can be answered with a yes. A. Does this interpretation fulfill everything the scripture says will happen? B. Does this interpretation not contradict any scripture in the Bible? And C. Does this interpretation not contradict or violate in any sense God's nature or his attributes? There are two purposes that the book of Revelation fulfills. The events in this book will finalize forever the war that has raged from creation until now between God and Satan. That can only happen with the judgment and resulting condemnation of Satan to the lake of fire. Secondly, it is the salvation and complete spiritual restoration of the Jews that must happen in the future. It has been prophesied that all believing Jews will be saved, but that will not be completed until the first half of the tribulation. Throughout this study, I will be using the generally accepted, quote, golden rule of interpretation, which is when the plain sense of Scripture makes common sense, seek no other sense. You might wonder about translations of the Bible and which one is best. That's entirely up to you. You need one that you can understand. And what better test is there but turning to the book of Revelation? I use many translations, and I deem the New Living Translation to be one of the best for putting the scripture in today's vernacular. The King James Version sticks pretty close to the Greek, but it's hard to understand that King James English. All translations that are accepted by the church are good, and they are all God's holy scriptures. Now let's embark on our study, beginning with chapter 1 of Revelation. The first thing John does is set forth the signatures of this letter. Almost every book of the New Testament is in the form of a letter, and the signatures appear first. This letter is signed by the Trinity, by God the Father, by the sevenfold Spirit in Revelation 1-4, and by Jesus Christ his Son in Revelation 1-5. You probably have never heard of the sevenfold Spirit, but John had. It is explained in Isaiah 11-2, as the way in which the Holy Spirit speaks to each believer's spirit. When we are truly born again, this is the means by which we are personally united with God on a daily basis. The sevenfold Spirit of God is mentioned about four times throughout the book. Isaiah tells us of the seven ways the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirits. Number one, he identifies himself as the Spirit of the Lord and not some unfamiliar spirit. Notice then these next attributes of the Spirit are grouped in twos. Next comes wisdom that brings with it understanding. Anything that the Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit will be wisdom and truth, bringing with it an amazing ability to understand. Alternatively, he can speak to you, giving you counsel, bringing with that 
the might or the ability to follow the direction that the Holy Spirit is leading you to take. Next, he gives you added knowledge so that every time a choice arises, you will begin to learn him, his will, and where he wants you to go, and thus attaining knowledge. Finally, the leading of the Spirit always instills in us the importance of letting him guide us through life. Since in the end, it is he who judges, thus putting a godly and holy fear in your heart. This ends the first episode. The next episode will cover Jesus' messages to the seven churches. I need you, though, before you leave, to remember to click on the subscribe button and the like button. And don't forget to share this podcast with those whom you love. This will enable me to continue to give you helpful insights in this study.